не учим, а практикуем. Играем в английский от души. Свободный мощный тренажер. Оксин Лишбот. Телеграм. У меня было уже достаточно приключений. I had now had adventures enough for a time. И я чувствовал себя очень счастливым быть дома с моими козами и другими питомцами. And I felt very happy to be at home with my goats and other pets. Несколькими годами ранее, A few years before, я начал содержание трех козлят, которых я поймал. I had started with keeping three kids that I had caught. Теперь у меня было стадо из сорока трех коз. Now I had a herd of three and forty goats. Некоторые из них были старые, некоторые молодые. Some of them young, some old. Я содержал их в пяти маленьких полях, которые я огородил. I kept them in five little fields that I had fenced. У подножия моего холма с замком. At the foot of my castle hill. У меня никогда не было недостатка в мясе и было к тому же много молока. I never had any lack of meat and I had plenty of milk too. На самом деле? Indeed. Я зашел так далеко, что устроил небольшую маслобойню. I had gone so far as to set up a little dairy. И под час мои козы давали мне галлон или два молока в день. And sometimes my goats gave me a gallon or two of milk in a day. До того, как я прибыл на остров, я никогда не доил корову. Before coming to the island, I had never milked a cow. Более того, козу. Much less a goat. Я никогда не видел, как делается масло. I had never seen butter made. Или даже сыр. Or even cheese. Я научился, как делать все эти вещи. But I learned how to do everything of the kind. И теперь у меня было больше масла и сыра, чем я мог съесть. And now I had more butter and cheese than I could eat. После обеда у меня была привычка выходить на прогулку. After dinner it was my custom to go out for a stroll. Как горд я был своим маленьким королевством. How proud I was of my little kingdom. Если бы вы увидели меня тогда, If you had seen me then, вы не посмеялись бы. 
You would not have laughed. Вы испугались бы. You would have been frightened. Ибо более странно выглядящего человека вы никогда не видели. For a stranger looking fellow you never saw. Пожалуйста, вот вам мое описание. Be pleased to take a picture of me. На моей голове была большая шапка, сделанная из козьей шкуры. On my head was a big cap made of goat skin. Она была очень высокая и без формы. It was very tall and without shape. Лоскут свисал с нее сзади, чтобы оберегать шею от дождя. A flap hung down from the back of it to keep the rain off my neck. Короткая куртка из козьей шкуры. I wore a short jacket of goat skin. И бриджи из того же. And a pair of knee breeches of the same. У меня не было ни чулок, ни башмаков. I had neither stockings nor shoes. Я носил вокруг ног и ступни странные вещи. But I wore around my legs and feet some queer things. Которые я называл баскинами. That I called buskins. Они были сделаны из козьей шкуры также. They were made of goat skin too. И были очень удобны при ходьбе между кустами и камнями. And were of great use when walking among briars or stones. Вокруг талии у меня был широкий пояс из сыромятной кожи. Around my waist I had a broad belt of rawhide. Мне не требовался ни меч, ни кинжал. I had no need of sword or dagger. И потому я носил в этом поясе маленькую пилу и топорик. And so I carried in this belt a little saw and a hatchet. Другой ремень, который висел на плече. Another belt, which hung over my shoulder. Держал рог с порохом и мешочек с дробью. Held my powder horn and shot pouch. На спине висела корзина. On my back was slung a basket. На плече было мое ружье. On my shoulder was my gun. Над головой я носил мой большой грубый уродливый зонт. Above my head I carried my great clumsy ugly umbrella. Мое лицо было темным, как красное дерево. My face was as dark as mahogany. Она была смуглым от солнца и загорелым от горячих ветров. Она была смуглым от солнца и загорелым от горячих ветров. 
It was tanned by the sun and browned by the hot winds. Борода была одно время ярд длиной. My beard was at one time a yard long. Но я вскоре устал от нее. But I soon grew tired of it. И я обрезал ее довольно коротко. And cut it pretty short. И все же даже тогда она выглядела довольно седой. Yet even then it looked grisly enough. Уверяю вас. I assure you. Не очень красивая картинка. It is not a very handsome picture. Не так ли? Is it? Не вините меня. But do not blame me. Я одевался так, как мог. I dressed as well as I could. Я содержал себя в чистоте. I kept myself clean. Я старался быть достойным уважения. I tried to be worthy of respect. Даже хотя никто не видел меня. Even though no one saw me. Я осматривал мое королевство. I looked over my little kingdom. И был горд и счастлив. And was proud and happy. Вы бы посмеялись, видя меня и мое семейство, когда приходило время обеда. You would have laughed to see me and my family when dinner time came. Во-первых, вот я сам. First there was myself. Король острова. King of the island. Я был повелителем всего, что я мог видеть. I was the lord of everything I could see. Затем, подобно королю. Then, like a king. Я ел один. I dined alone. Со слугами, смотрящими на меня. With my servants looking on me. Никому не было позволено говорить со мной, кроме попугая. No one was allowed to talk to me but parrot. Который сидел на спинке стула. Who sat on the back of my chair? И ждал того, что я ему дам. And waited for what I would give him. Мой пес был теперь столь старым и немощным. My dog was now so old and feeble. Что едва мог пошевелиться. That he could hardly stir. Он сидел всегда по правую руку от меня. He sat always at my right hand. И вилял хвостом, стоило мне щелкнуть пальцем. And wagged his tail if I did but snap my finger. 
Мои две кошки ждали. My two cats waited. Одна на каждой стороне от стола. One on each side of the table. Чтобы увидеть, что я им дам. To see what I would give them. Эти две кошки были не те же самые, которых я принес с корабля. These two cats were not the same that I had brought from the ship. Те были мертвы. Those were dead. Уже давно. Long ago. От старости. Of old age. Но они оставили много котят. But they had left many kittens. Оказалось так много кошек, что я был вынужден выгнать их. There had come to be so many cats that I was forced to drive them away. Все, кроме этих двух, ушли в леса. All but these two had gone into the woods. И стали совсем дикими. And become very wild. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Robinson Crusoe written anew for children by James Baldwin. I am happy as a king. I had now had adventures enough for a time, and I felt very happy to be at home with my goats and other pets. A few years before I had started with keeping three kids that I had caught. Now I had a herd of three and forty goats, some of them young, some old. I kept them in five little fields that I had fenced at the foot of my castle hill. I never had any lack of meat, and I had plenty of milk too. Indeed, I had gone so far as to set up a little dairy, and sometimes my goats gave me a gallon or two of milk in a day. Before coming to the island I had never milked a cow, much less a goat. I had never seen butter made, or even cheese. But I learned how to do everything of the kind, and now I had more butter and cheese than I could eat. After dinner it was my custom to go out for a stroll. How proud I was of my little kingdom! If you had seen me then, you would not have laughed. You would have been frightened, for a stranger-looking fellow you never saw. Be pleased to take a picture of me. On my head was a big cap made of goatskin. It was very tall and without shape. A flap hung down from the back of it to keep the rain off my neck. I wore a short jacket of goatskin and a pair of knee breeches of the same. I had neither stockings nor shoes, but I wore around my legs and feet some queer things that I called buskins. They were made of goatskin too and were of great use when walking among briars or stones. Around my waist I had a broad belt of rawhide. I had no need of sword or dagger, and so I carried in this belt a little saw and a hatchet. Another belt, which hung over my shoulder, held my powder horn and shot pouch. On my back was slung a basket. On my shoulder was my gun. Above my head I carried my great, clumsy, ugly umbrella. My face was as dark as mahogany. It was tanned by the sun and browned by the hot winds. My beard was at one time a yard long, but I soon grew tired of it and cut it pretty short. Yet even then it looked grisly enough, I assure you. 
It is not a very handsome picture, is it? But do not blame me. I dressed as well as I could. I kept myself clean. I tried to be worthy of respect, even though no one saw me. I looked over my little kingdom and was proud and happy. You would have laughed to see me and my family when dinner time came. First, there was myself, Robinson Crusoe, king of the island. I was the lord of everything I could see. Then, like a king, I dined alone with my servants looking on. No one was allowed to talk to me but Paul Parrot, who sat on the back of my chair and waited for what I would give him. My dog was now so old and feeble that he could hardly stir. He sat always at my right hand and wagged his tail if I did but snap my finger. My two cats waited, one on each side of the table, to see what I would give them. These two cats were not the same that I had brought from the ship. Those were dead long ago, of old age, but they had left many kittens. Indeed, there had come to be so many cats that I was forced to drive them away. All but these two had gone into the woods and become very wild.